Thank you so much for joining us for the UN Food Systems Global Youth Dialogue. My name is Dustin Liu. I'm currently calling in from San Francisco where the sun is currently rising. I'm serving as the ninth US Youth Observer to the United Nations and I am one of your curators today. Mofi, over to you. Thank you, Dustin. My name is Mofi Kanamuga. I am curator number two. I am just across the pond from London. I am both a gender equality and STEM activist. Today we have curated in this Zoom room an incredible group of more than 100 young people from every corner of the globe to kick off a conversation about the future of food systems and how we can work together to ensure good food for all. We also have some folks joining us from UNTV, so a warm welcome to you as well. We are excited to share the first half of the session with a larger audience before we transition to breakout rooms with our youth dialogues. Each of you have been invited here because of the impact you have already made, be it local or global, in advocating for a healthier and more sustainable future for our generation. Now, we all know that this future is in our hands. The upcoming UN Food System Summit in September presents a moment for action. It is painfully clear to everyone here today that we are living in a pivotal and challenging moment of history. COVID-19 has exasperated the already existing inequities in a world that is facing a global climate crisis. The ways in which we produce, process, and consume food, our food systems, impact all areas of our lives. Our food choices, how we grow, what we eat, where we purchase, how we waste, are all opportunities to drive positive change across the sustainable development goals and to deliver good food for all. Equitable, sustainable, and resilient food systems must be at the center of all global efforts to build back better, going back to normal is no longer an option. We need to reimagine what is possible. The UN Food System Summit will launch bold new actions to transform food as a solution to drive prosperity for people and the planet right now. And we need young voices like you at the front forefront of this movement, identifying actions and inspiring change. After today's event, the goal is that this global youth dialogue will spark a chain of youth-led independent food system dialogues around the world in the lead up to the September summit. A wave of youth conversations and action to reshape our world of tomorrow. Let's go get it. Before we get to anything, we wanted to take a moment to share norms on how we plan to share this virtual space together. Above all else, this is a brave space for all young people who come from a diversity of identities from race, ethnicity, religion, gender, or sexual orientation. And we invite you to contribute to a space where folks have the opportunity to be heard, seen, and respected. Hate or discrimination have no place in our Zoom space. If you can agree to that, could you just drop a yes in the chat for us? Drop a yes if you can agree to those norms just so we can ensure that we're contributing to a wonderful, brave space. Thank you so much. This is wonderful energy in the chat. Thank you so much for contributing to the brave space that we are creating here today. We also invite each of you to please rename yourself on Zoom to have your first and last name, preferred language, for example, English, French, Spanish, and preferred pronouns if you'd like. That way we are all on the same page and can lay a good foundation for respectful communication. On the topic of languages, we have simultaneous translation today for Spanish, Arabic, and French speakers. Please check out the translation button on the bottom of your screen. Though most of us have been using Zoom for what feels like a lifetime. Do remember, please keep your microphones muted when you are not speaking. And because we want to see all of your beautiful faces, please keep your cameras on, if your internet permits, that is. We have a chat function where we'll be spicing things up with some chat waves later. So stay tuned to see what we're talking about. And we encourage you all to actively participate. Absolutely. I am scrolling through these screens just to see who we have here. And it's just so excited to see so many faces from all parts of the world. For your information, the first half of our event will be live streamed on UNTV. We are live right now. So don't forget to at us on social media to share the great conversations that are happening in this room with the hashtags good food for all and hashtags food systems. Okay, here's how today is going to go down. The heart of this event is the dialogue itself, an opportunity to hear from all of you, your experiences of food systems and solutions to drive good food for all. But before we get there, we have a great lineup of some pretty cool adults and even cooler youth advocates joining our event today to help set the stage. We will be hearing from Ms. Amina J. Mohammed, the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Ms. Henrietta Four, 
Executive Director of UNICEF, Ms. Jiathama Wickramanayake, the UN Envoy on Youth, in addition to Dr. Agnes Kalibata, the UN Special Envoy for the Food Systems Summit. And of course, as the day is about the youth, we will hear some speeches from our very own Jessica Vega Ortega and Janya Green about the role of Indigenous persons and youth transforming food systems. In addition to some slam poetry on food and faith from UNHCR Goodwill Ambassador, Emmy Mahmood. Then in the second part of today's agenda, we will kick it off to the actual dialogue portion of today's event. This is where we get to hear from you and to listen to your perspectives on food systems. We'll discuss those details in a little bit, but in, a short, in short, we'll be splitting our group, our Zoom space, into separate breakout groups where we will dive deeper into more dynamic and intimate discussions around what a food system transformation looks like to you. Finally, we'll bring it all back together to hear the summary from each of the groups and to collectively build off on your ideas. This will also be where we set a special little challenge that we will be pitching to you just a little bit later. Okay, Mofi, I think we're ready to jump straight into today's event. We are now super excited to, <laughs> to introduce two celebrities, Netflix's own Waffles and Mochi, to give us a little taste about what good food means to them. Waffles and Mochi, over to you. Hmm. So today is the day we speak at the United Nations, Mochi. Oh. Well, how you feel about it? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it is great that the UN thinks food is as cool as we do. Oh. So uh, how should we start? Should we just say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, or should we say, your excellencies? Oh. No, no, you're right. You're right, Mochi. Let's let's just start by being ourselves and introduce who we are. Oh, wait, oh, oh, uh, oh, hey, hi, folks. Sorry to keep you waiting. We just wanted to make sure we got it right with our first speech at the United Nations event. <laughs> oh, you might not know us, but I'm Waffles, and this is my best friend, Mochi. Hello. And we have a new show on Netflix called Waffles and Mochi. It's a show for the whole family. It takes viewers on the adventure around the world to discover the wonder and joy of food, culture, and cooking together. Hi, Mochi. Oh. Mm -mm. When we heard that there was this United Nations Summit all about food systems, oh, we were so excited to get involved in this historic and exciting event. Because we love food, don't we, Mochi? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. We've had some pretty epic adventures across the globe. And we're just getting started on our journey to learn about what makes food good food. It can be pretty confusing, huh, Mochi? Oh, wow. That's why it's important that everyone everywhere is talking about how we can make our food systems better. So what is good food? On our adventures, we learned that good food is fresh and juicy. It bursts in your mouth. Or sometimes it's spicy like chili. <laughs> or sticky and melty like cheese. Good food fills bellies. And it helps us grow strong. <laughs> food makes funny noises. Crunchy and slurpy and... <laughs> yeah, that too much. Most important is that good food does good. Food is bigger than what is on your plate. It's science. It's culture. It's love. It means kids can go to school. Farmers can make money to feed their families while feeding their communities. It means all people everywhere can be healthy. And it means that our planet can be healthy too. Wow, wow. Good food brings people together. Food is the coolest thing in the whole world. All of you can change the world every time you eat. We want to wish you all the coolest and most excellent dialogue. We hope that you will all talk about the important things for you. Wow. Okay, okay. I'll stop, Mochi. But they should know that talking about the issues that matter most for them is the most important thing they can do at this event. It is through conversations like these that we can really make a difference. And we think that it is really cool that this is all about the voices of young people. Wow. Because they are the ones that own this future. And they should have a say in how we make big changes in our world to make it better. Wow. Before we hand over to other speakers, remember everyone, listen to your vegetables and help the planet. Wow. Yeah, wow. you get it, Mooch. Wow. UN Summit, done. Wow. Now what? Wow. Yeah, turn the magic card. Wow. Let's go. Wow. No, this way. No, that way. Oh, no, back this way. Come on, Mooch. 
I, I think I'm going to need a moment to collect myself because that was an incredible way to kick off our food system summit. I think I need waffles and mochi to kick off every single event that I do. Judging from the smiles in this room, I think you folks agree. So Mofi, how do you think we can rebrand ourselves to be Dustin and Mofi? Get a Netflix deal. Fire. Ladies and gentlemen, tune in next summer for the Dustin and Moffy series. We will see you there. <laughs> no, Dustin, you're too much. Real talk, mochi is so adorable. And and waffles, <laughs> you are too, okay? You're both adorable. But shifting gears here a little bit, we are so honoured to now share a message from the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Miss Amina J. Mohammed. Hello everyone. It is a real pleasure to open this important event. Youth are not only the leaders of the future, but are acting as leaders each and every day. Today's actions will affect tomorrow's world, and now is the time to make the right choices and take the responsible steps. Only through intergenerational solidarity and international cooperation will we be able to secure a better world for all. The COVID-19 pandemic has exposed deep-rooted inequities in our world, including in our food systems. Those suffering the most are the vulnerable, including young people. Yet young people are also among the most resilient, taking the challenges and converting them into opportunities for devising innovative solutions, broadening the engagements by going virtual and mobilizing peer-to-peer -peer support. The world needs your expertise, your ideas and partnership in this decade of action to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. We are convening a su summit on food systems because they are critical to the achievement of the SDGs. Food systems which involve all the processes that enable us to feed ourselves, our families and our communities, and are connected to our health, our environment and our cultures. In short, food is much bigger than what is on your plate. This is a complex challenge, but only together will we transform our food systems to be more equitable, inclusive and sustainable and deliver the SDGs by 2030. This global dialogue is just one stepping stone. It is an invitation to be engaged, to be innovative, and to propose solutions while recognizing that one size does not fit all. I look forward to learning about the conclusion of this youth global dialogue and to obtaining a clear sense of your main concerns and how you would like the Food Systems Summit to address them. Thank you for everything that you are doing and will do and to help us keeping ambition high and acting with urgency towards 2030. I wish you a fruitful discussion. Thank you so much, Madam Deputy Secretary General, for that really powerful foundation to remind us the importance of intergenerational partnerships and how each and every one of us can play an important role in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. Mafi, I'm curious, anything stand out to you in those opening remarks? I love what she said. She said, food is much bigger than what's on our plate. And that is correct to a T. Food unites and echoing what we've had previously from waffles and mochi. Food is what nourishes us and keeps us healthy, but it brings people together. And I just look forward to the rest of this, uh, this dialogue as we hear more from the youth um, and what we see that we want to, what we want to impact in terms of the SDGs and food. Thank you, Mafi. Really appreciate that really insightful insight. Uh, we are now so excited to hand the floor over to the one and only Jessica Vega Ortega, a fierce promoter and defender of the individual and collective rights of indigenous peoples, specifically for indigenous youth. Jessica, so good to see you. The floor is yours. Jessica, I think you are on mute. Dubá di Quindo está ahí, está ahí. Eh, desde mis diferentes procesos de base, saludo hermanas y hermanos. Agradezco la invitación a este diálogo tan importante y con tan distinguidas mujeres. La enviada especial, la secretaria general, eh, la enviada especial de la alimentación, de la juventud, la directora ejecutiva de UNICEF pero también a las diferentes voces de las juventudes. Es un honor para mí estar aquí, pero también es una responsabilidad, porque somos conscientes del mundo, está atravesando diferentes procesos, nuestras regiones atraviesan dificultades. Por un lado tenemos 
muchos avances en nuestros derechos, pero por otro lado también movilizaciones en contra de nuestros derechos. Y ahora más que nunca debemos acelerar los compromisos. Nosotros estamos comprometidos cuando hablamos de la transformación profunda de la alimentación, que incluya a la agricultura familiar, a la agricultura campesina, indígena, a la agroecología, la soberanía alimentaria, la gobernanza. Está demostrado que como pueblos indígenas tenemos modos de producción de alimentación saludable, nutritivos y adecuados a la salud humana, prácticas favorables al medio ambiente. Pero también estamos expuestos a nuevos fenómenos como la extranjerización de las tierras por los grandes grupos económicos que causan enfermedades crónicas, perjudicando a la salud y a la seguridad alimentaria sostenible. Por ello, debemos reinventar las prácticas y descolonizar los procesos con métodos favorables basados en los derechos humanos, adecuados a nuestros biomas, a la pertinencia cultural con políticas sociales, económicas y ambientales sostenibles que incluyan a las mujeres, las juventudes y los procesos intergeneracionales. Valorizar los saberes ancestrales. Los pueblos indígenas hemos hablado de nuestros alimentos como nuestra identidad misma y las juventudes tenemos muchos retos. Entre ellos, seguir instando al Estado para tomar acciones puntuales. Por ejemplo, incluir en nuestros planes de estudio los sistemas alimentarios, buscar la existencia de un foro de la alimentación y juventudes indígenas en la FAO y sentar con ello la revalorización de nuestros conocimientos resilientes. Las agencias deben incluir a los profesionales indígenas y a las juventudes para que contribuyan sus conocimientos técnicos y tener mejores proyectos. La sociedad debe aprender de la cocina tradicional y que cada semilla sea reconocida y no discriminada y evitar también el desperdicio de ella. Los pueblos indígenas tenemos una relación profunda con nuestras tierras. Nuestra alimentación nos sigue formando. Hoy, cuando puedo comer un guamuchi, una fruta de mi comunidad, revivo mi niñez y momentos de alegría. Y sé que sucede lo mismo con muchos en el mundo, pero si la alimentación no es un derecho humano, entonces solo algunos tenemos privilegios. Gracias. Ahora tengo el honor de presentar a la directora ejecutiva de UNICEF, Henry Tafor. Muchas gracias por su trabajo y por apoyarnos. So thank you very much, Jessica. And thank you also, Dustin and Mofi and Waffles and Mochi. It's just, it's great to see everyone. And thank you also to our Deputy Secretary General, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, and a special greeting to all the young people who have joined us today. Uh, this event, as you've just heard, is a chance to think boldly and collectively about how to strengthen food systems for the future and to hear from you because you have the biggest stake in our future. We need your ideas and your insights. These last two decades have shown us that we can make progress. Over this period, the prevalence of undernourished children has declined by one third, and the number of undernourished children has been reduced by 55 million. These are great achievements, but we must do far more. One in three children is not growing well due to malnutrition. Half of all children do not have access to healthy diets that they need to reach their potential. And we're seeing stubbornly high rates of wasting and stunting and a worrying increase in overweight and obesity. At the same time, our world faces a highly challenging and toxic combination of inequalities, poverty, conflict, climate change, COVID-19, and even looming famines that threaten further progress on nutrition. Without urgent action, an additional nine million children under the age of five may suffer from wasting by next year. To prevent this, we need to overhaul our approach to food systems from decisions about what food is processed but to how it's processed, packaged and promoted, what impact these decisions have on children's nutrition. Too often food systems put profit over purpose, 
This places the most nutritious foods often out of reach for many households. Families are forced to turn to heavily marketed and unhealthy alternatives. These may be cheaper and they may be more available, but they also need lead to poor nutritional outcomes, threatening children's development and growth, and in the worst cases, survival itself. We also need to take into account these systems impact on our planet, especially when industrial food production contributes one third of global greenhouse gas emissions. And when the use of fertilizers and pesticides has such a devastating ecological impact. For the sake of our children and our planet, we need to turn this around. At the upcoming UN Food Systems Summit, it is an important start. It will bring together governments and businesses and NGOs and young people to begin the process of reforming food systems in a number of ways. So let me just uh, mention these. One, we need to improve the quality of what children eat. This includes mandatory standards for children's food, public policies that promote healthy food and supply chain interventions to fortify staple foods for young children. Second, we need to improve the quality of children's food environments where they live, learn, eat, and meet. This includes ending marketing of unhealthy foods that targets children, serving better food in schools and labeling foods with accurate information that children and families can understand and can be educated. Third, we need to improve feeding practices, especially in early childhood. This includes supporting breastfeeding and helping parents and children alike make better choices for themselves, their children, and the planet. And fourthly, we need to find ways to minimize the environmental damage of food systems and reduce their carbon footprint. At every step, we need to listen to the voices of children and young people, just like you. We, you have some of the best and brightest ideas about how we can change food systems for the better. And so to all of you young people who are here today, lend us your ideas, your energy, and your insights about the food ecosystems around you. And as Waffles and Mochi said, food is science, culture, and love. So help us to shape better food systems in every country and let us find new ways to deliver good nutrition and a healthier planet for every country, every community, and every child. Thank you and back over to you, Dustin and Mofi. Thank you both Jessica and Madam Executive Director. I must admit, it was lovely to watch you both engage in such discussion as we are all seriously in this fight together. And it's clear the UN is here to support this youth movement for a healthier and more sustainable food future. So this is a very good moment to probably show you all a short film, but we are also extremely excited to welcome Janya Green, our renowned award-winning community garden youth activist. Hello everyone. I am Janaya Green, the Youth Vice Chair for Action Track One, which is focused on safe and nutritious foods for all. The UN Food System Summit Action Tracks are a means of gathering a wide range of stakeholders from different backgrounds to generate new ideas and amplify existing in initiatives. Each of the five action tracks is aligned to the summit's five objectives. While we work within our action tracks, we are also working across the action tracks to address possible trade-offs and solutions that have far-reaching benefits. As you all know, hunger worldwide is a huge problem. The number of undernourished people continue to increase in 2019. And even before taking COVID-19 into account, hunger was projected to rise. If we do not reverse these current trends, the SDG zero hunger target will not be met. When I was 12 years old, I began to see these issues in my own community with rising needs for access to fresh produce and rapidly increasing diet-related illnesses. I knew I had to act. I got involved in, for, in the 4-H program and with the help of my mentor, I started the Bridge Community Garden. 
through the garden, I've taught students how to grow their own produce and create their own raised bed gardens, which has been so important for COVID-19 and the grocery shortages in my hometown. It's also been a way for me to learn new technologies in agriculture and teach them to older farmers in my community. I hope that the new practices we teach will help my community be more efficient and productive in the future. This passion for my community that led to my involvement with the Food Systems Summit and Action Track 1. Throughout these past several months, our team with Action Track 1 has been diligently seeking ideas for game-changing and systemic solutions to address needs around the world in the areas of nutrition, food safety, and zero hunger. Action Track 1 aims to end hunger in all forms of malnutrition and reduce the incidence of diet-related, non-communicable disease. Achieving this goal requires that we deliver on the right to food, ensuring that all people at all times have access to a sufficient amount of affordable and safe foods. To identify these solutions, we sought ideas from the public as well as reviewed high-profile international reports and spoke with relevant stakeholders and scholars. Our working groups have diligently reviewed and evaluated the proposed solutions identified through these channels. Our action track is working to ensure that the solutions we propose are sustainable and actionable, providing real impact at scale for people suffering from a lack of access to safe and nutritious foods. I am also proud to have joined with 25 other young leaders from around the world who are working together to deliver a youth pledge at the UN Food Systems Summit in September. We know that what we eat shapes us. It influences our health and well-being, and it also impacts the environment. That's why we're hoping to start a movement called Youth, hashtag act for food, hashtag act for change. A global campaign to bring the signatures of one million youth to the summit, calling on leaders to bring significant change to our food system. I hope that through the Youth Pledge and other initiatives of the Food System Summit, youth around the world will stand up and help bring true change into our food system. I am so passionate about other young people getting involved in the summit through dialogues, the Youth Pledge, or even joining the conversation through the online platform. The Food System Summit needs to hear from a diverse range of people in countries around the world. Each of us brings an important perspective from our individual countries that understands their particular needs, challenges and strengths of our own communities. Thank you for joining us today to think critically about how we can improve our food system to create a better, safer, healthier world for all. I ask you to end your discussion groups with an open mind and great confidence that your opinion is needed, valued, and heard. Do not let your engagement with the Food System Summit and with addressing hunger needs end here today. And above all, let us not give up or go discouraged by the important work ahead. It will take hard work to transform our food system. But when we all work together, we can achieve more than we ever could on our own. Thank you. Janya, thank you so much for sharing with us a piece of your change-making journey. It is just so powerful to hear how you have drawn from your own personal narrative to define your why. Why Good Food Matters to you. So grateful to have you in community with us. Thank you for starting to prime how we're going to enter our discussion rooms. Now we have the incredible honor of hearing from the incomparable Ms. Jathma Wakramanayaka, the UN Envoy on Youth, who serves, and might I add, is slaying uh, as the global advocate for addressing our needs and rights as young people, as well as making sure that the UN is meeting young people where they are at. Jathma, over to you. Thank you very much, Dustin. I wish you were there to introduce me in every meeting. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, it, it's such an honor to be here. Thanks for the invitation and really to speak after Janya is such an honor to hear about the work that she's doing, similar to the hundreds of you who are joining us on this call. Um, I think a lot of things that has been said by the Deputy Secretary General and, and ED4, but let me enter into this conversation trying to um, trying to share with you some thoughts that has come to me in my work in the past couple of years, um, also in the intersection between food systems and climate action as well. And I think as the UN and world leaders begin to increasingly act on commitments in the decade of action to deliver on the sustainable development goals, transforming our global food systems is arguably one of our biggest hopes when it comes to limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. This is especially true when we consider 
consider that currently 33% of global greenhouse emissions are generated by food systems. Increasing industrial farming is resulting in loss of biodiversity at an enormous scale that could become irreversible. According to the recent UN Biodiversity Report, one million species could go extinct within the next decades. So we cannot continue to produce and consume food the way that we do. The climate emergency and our unsustainable food systems are driving social injustice and inequalities, especially among young people who are disproportionately affected. Young people are particularly susceptible to food insecurity. The live hunger map by the UN World Food Programme shows that almost one billion people do not have food to eat, most of whom are children and young people. As Henrietta said in her statement as well, already in middle and low income countries, 45% of the deaths, that's almost half of the deaths among children under five years is caused by undernutrition. Conversely, in some other regions of the world, there is also a rise in obesity among children and young people. So it's essential to recognize that young people have specific nutritional needs during this transitional period, which, specifically, which is specifically important if they have had the disadvantage of poor nutrition during the early years of childhood. With the compounding effects of COVID-19 on global food systems, children and young people are at a further increased risk of food security worldwide. The socioeconomic health and development impacts of unsustainable food systems and malnutrition are persistent challenges for young people. But despite being at a disadvantage in facing such a vast macro socioeconomic problem, young people are increasingly bringing innovation, to the production, distribution, procurement, and preparation of food, as well as its con consumption. There was a question in the chat asking, how can young people take action? So I'll share a couple of examples from my work that I've come across. For an example, initiatives like the Young Professionals for Agricultural Development and Youth in Landscapes, among many other initiatives like that, they are mobilizing youth action for sustainable food systems through technical training and knowledge exchange among young farmers. Young entrepreneurs like Jania, who just spoke, and Carolina Medina, who is one of the young leaders for sustainable development goals recognized by, by my office, works to make healthy food more affordable and accessible to everyone. Carolina, for an example, co-founded and leads uh, Agrupa. It is a startup based in her country, Colombia, that leverages mobile phone technology to organize small businesses. Across the world, young people are leveraging technology, passion, and their commitment to a safer future to change the course in global and local food systems and support countries to deliver on the ambitions of the SDGs and the Paris Agreement. While young people lead in driving food systems transformation, they too often also face exploitative working conditions, exclusion from decision making, barriers in accessing financial support, and poor remuneration. To ensure the comprehensive development of young people and their equal opportunity to contribute when it comes to tackling some of our world's biggest issues, it's critical for the UN Food Systems Summit to mobilize action not only on the role of food systems in climate change, but also in development deficit faced by communities due to the lasting impacts of the current destructive food systems. There's an enormous potential of food systems to provide, for an example, decent and dignified jobs for young people, break the cycles of poverty, and help eliminate generational inequalities. Governments need to re-envision agricultural policies to reflect food system models that integrate intergenerational equity and accessibility of land, training, finance, as well as decision-making spaces for young people. So it's my hope that this dialogue and the momentum that it's building towards the UN Food Systems Summit will advance opportunities to swiftly take action to support decision-makers, businesses, world leaders to design, adopt, and implement strategies that holistically address the interconnected problems of social and environmental injustice, the climate emergency, food insecurity, and biodiversity losses across the world, 
all the while engaging young people as equal partners in these common global efforts. I wish all of you all the best for a successful start to these dialogues. And I hope that the special envoy for the summit and other decision makers in this room will take your messages to the UN Food Systems Summit and be your advocates there as well. Thank you so, so much for that critical message, Madam Youth Envoy. Now, I am just really happy that you emphasise the importance of youth engaging in this discussion. And I do hope also that these conversations are taken to the summit in September. Dustin, what are a few of the key moments and messages that you've taken from this dialogue so far? I mean, I just, I've been taking notes nonstop, right? I'm reminded in the remarks that we just heard that young people are experts of their own experience and should be considered as equal partners. I'm resonating with this idea that each and every one of us are connected to this topic of good food in some way, shape, or form. And I'm resonating with this idea that young people bring what we need in this movement. We need in in innovation. We need creativity. We need imagination. And that's what young people can bring to these global dialogues. So I'm just thrilled to be a part of this event, thrilled to be part of these dialogues. And, and Mafia, I'm going to hand it back to you to move us through this okay. program. Thank you, Dustin. I, before I do, I'm just going to add on that. Jayathema mentioned something that really stuck with me, and she said that it's our role, in a sense, to break these cycles and generational inequality. And I really do believe that with the youth on this call and with the youth that we work with across the globe, that these are the cycles that we are going to break. Nevertheless, as you all might already know, this summit was called by the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, to raise both global awareness and land and actions that transform food systems to resolve not only hunger, but to reduce diet-related disease worldwide. To do so, he appointed Dr. Agnes Calabata as the UN Special Envoy to the 2021 Food System Summit. It is our great honor to give the floor to the Special Envoy as she highlights the role of the summit and the aims of this dialogue. Thank you. Thank you, Dustin, and thank you, Mofi, and thank you for the work you've done so far. This is an amazing, amazing summit. It's good to see just how you're beginning to, to put this together, but also how you're setting the tone for the rest of the summit. So we probably need to hire you to get the summit going, right? Is there something called a youth, youth company that, <laughs> that we can get to hire to deliver the summit for us? Because this is really amazing. You've put on a great show and I really appreciate uh, the tone you're setting as one of the the very first global uh, conferences that are happening uh, in, in, in ahead of the, the summit that we have, the pre-summit that is coming. So like you said, my work has been uh, made a lot easier by many of the people that went before me, the Deputy Secretary General, the, uh, the ED of um, UNICEF, and the envoys that have gone before me, really highlighting uh, some of the challenges that we face and why the summit is important. So I don't want to, to go through those uh, again, but I'll just mention why uh, the, the summit, because this is something that keeps coming up over and over and over again. And, and then why did we think that within that context of the sum, summit, having this space for youth and having this conversation with you is extremely important. In addition to every, everything everybody else has said, I just want to add a few remarks there. Uh, in 20, 2015, you know, just after the what they called MDGs, many of you may not know MDGs, you are still very young, but MDGs were put in place to come through on a number of issues, and I think we learned a lot of things from there. Now, in 2015, the world came together and realized that there are so many things we still needed to do to be able to, to come through on equity and a number of other areas who were behind. And we have an agenda, the 2030 agenda was put in place. Except as, as um, the youth envoy was saying, and, and many of you and many other speakers were saying, except for example, hunger, we've, we've added 60 million people since 2015 that are hungry rather than take away. We talked about zero hunger and we, instead we've added hunger. Uh, of course, I'm not even talking about the COVID-19 numbers and I could go on. So there are a number of areas, but let me just highlight two that are very critical. Uh, that we probably didn't know, didn't understand as well in 2015 as we understand today. Of course, COVID-19 is one of them and its impact and how it, uh, something like that could completely destroy everything we've, we've spent our, 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 our lifetime putting together. 
But one other thing that was not understood well is the whole impact of food systems on biodiversity. Yes, we know we impact biodiversity, but 80% loss of biodiversity comes from food systems. The other part that wasn't understood as well in 2015 is the impact on climate change. So the only reason that I'm part of this conversation that I accepted, I have another job, by the way, I have a day job. So this is my, my extra job, the special envoy, you might say, is the extra job. But the only reason I accepted to take this job is because climate change is taking away everything that my part of the world was working towards. I, I work in an area where ensuring that smallholder farmers have a livelihood that they are proud of, that they can send their kids to school, like my parents sent me to school while they were smallholder farmers. And we were getting there. We we're beginning to see these improvements in their lives, seeing that taken away overnight by climate change, seeing all the knowledge they've built their, you know, over centuries of, of, of mankind being taken away when a farmer doesn't know when the next rain is coming, yet they, they, they leave off rain. Uh, when every plant around them is dying because, again, that's what they are living through. So seeing that being compromised, I, I was like, okay, you know what? Bring it on, bring on the Food System Summit, bring it on and let's see what we can do with it. So that's how I'm here. But that's also how you're here because I don't think that delivering on food system summit on the food system summit is possible without engaging the youth of this world. In my part of the world, youth, if you take 35 and, and below, are 77% of the population. So ideally, the world, my part of the world belongs to the youth, and yet the voices, their voice is not as strong as it should be. And yet the ability to, to, to determine where we are going is not as strong as it should be. So we felt, and, and, I, and someone earlier was saying that global youth are 50% of, of all of us, so which make, makes a whole lot of sense. So we felt coming to the summit, that being able to be very clear that this is not about me, mine is phasing out, this is about the future. The future is youth, the future is of our, of our world is our youth. So being able to, to do the right thing by our continent is being able to do the right thing by our children. And so the biggest burden of your generation is going to be to correct all the mess that has been put on top of, of this world. Of course, there's a lot to learn from, and that's what the Secretary General was hoping for. There are lots of solutions. There's lots of learning. I think one biggest opportunity that you have as young people is being able to learn from all the knowledge that has been generated over time. There's so much. But you also have huge capability to convert that into something very small that you can carry in your pocket and have all, all the knowledge in, within your pocket in a short period of time. And, and so th th there's so much opportunity that you're living with. So in, a, in terms of ability to really influence where we are going, in terms of ability to shape where we, we are going, in terms of ability to avoid some of the mistakes we've already made, in terms of ability to correct some of the mistakes we've already made, you have a huge opportunity sitting with you. And the other biggest opportunity is we are here to support you. We, we basically, you have, you can say you have your bucks covered. I hope they are covered the right way. <laughs> but you can say you have your bucks covered because we are here to support you and we are going to definitely support you. So we felt that in the leadership of the Food System Summit, we needed young people. So you will see, uh, your, Jan, is it uh, Janya or Tanya? Janya. Uh, you, she's a, she's a youth um, vice chair, and a number of, of you are also vice chairs. And the reason is so that we can give voice to this leadership of the summit, so that we can give that signal that going forward, we need to be clear that young people have a huge space in what we are doing. So I really need you to understand that. Now, I'm not going to waste a whole lot of your time, but I need you to understand that these dialogues are extremely important. As you go into this dialogue that you're going in, I need to, to I, I would like to request that you focus on three things. So our world is a give and take world, right? And I mentioned it last time. As young people, you have a lot to bring on the table. You have a lot to put on the table. And I think it would make, it give you a lot of credibility, give your voice a lot of credibility. If you can be very clear around what you're bringing on the table, just give it voice. You know, it's your energy, your ability to understand things faster, 
your fearlessness, whatever, whatever is holding us back is not holding you back. There's so much you bring on the table. You know, crystallize it and give, put it in words so the people can understand very clearly what you're putting on the table. So that's number one. Number two is, what is it that you expect from the summit? This whole process that has engaged the whole world, which was very deliberate. Uh, someone said, uh, food is everything, but food is what you and I, the decisions that you and I make. So taking it to the whole world was extremely important. So what is it that you'd like to see to be able to do a good job from a food, to our food systems? As young people, what do you want to do? But I think maybe where your voice is going to be most, most, most important. What would you like the world to stop doing? What have you come to appreciate? Are things we can't live with? Are things that undermine our world, our planet? Are things that undermine us as a people and where we are going? You know, acting for food, acting for change, maybe you should start with acting for people because this is about people in the first place, right? This is about people and the inequities we have in our system that have built over and over and over and over and over. And we are, unfortunately, we are getting to a place where we, besides COVID, we are getting comfortable. We, many of us did not even know. COVID exposed so much that many of us didn't even know. Many of us, it, it also exposed how so many people live on the edge of the rest of the world. I mean, so why are we having all this stuff happening in our midst that we are, it's okay to live with it? So I think there's so much that has been exposed. And I think as people that have no conflict of interest, <laughs> you can actually step forward and say, listen guys, you need to stop being this stuff. You need to stop being this and that because our world can't handle it. You know, you can afford to do it because today we produce so much more food than we need. It's not about producing food or that one day we'll run out of food. We produce so much more food than we need, we need except it's, it's not equitably available. It's not equitably distributed. And one trillion dollars worth of that food is being wasted, contributing 8% to emissions. Let me just give you an example. Europe wastes exactly the amount, the same amount of food that Africa produces every year. So if Africa could stop producing and Europe could, <laughs> and could be supported by the amount of food that Europe is wasting. So, so uh, there's, there's so much that, that we can do. And, and again, I'm recognizing that you're going through this, this conversation and I want, you to, I want to encourage you to, to really be bold in thinking through what you bring on the table, be bold in thinking through what you think we really need to do given where we are going and be bold around some of the things that need to stop being done. As we're having these conversations, one of the biggest challenge I'm seeing is just conflict and interest and what we call political economy. Political economy is when something benefits me and I can't stop doing it because it benefits me. Uh, but I think if your voices can bring out some of those issues and some of those challenges that you see, I think it will, 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 will all be better for it. I want to end on this note. I, I noticed in the last meeting we had when we were preparing for this meeting, you all said that uh, of the action track ideas you had contributed, youth contribution had contributed 4% of the ideas or something like that. This is the time you get to change that. This is the time you get to make your voices very clear around what your contribution to the thinking out there is today in this meeting. In these dialogues we go in, we need to understand where your hearts are at, where your minds are at. So be very clear on what your minds represent. Also remember you represent so many other people. Don't take your voices for granted. Represent those people and make sure that the issues are coming out, not because of where you're sitting, but because of who you're representing. So thank you so much. I look forward to meeting you after the conversations. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kalibata. You know, thank you, Madam Special Envoy, not only for your words, but for your leadership in organizing this entire summit. It, it certainly is a large second job to have. Uh, we look forward to being clear on what young people can bring to the table. We appreciate your commitment to Center Youth Voices as part of this entire process. And thank you for all you're doing as part of the Food System Summit. Now to conclude this first part of our event, we are incredibly honored to invite UNHCR Ambassador Emmy Mahmood to share a powerful Ramadan poem on food, family, and faith. Emmy is a Sudanese American slam poet, 
and former refugee who was appointed to be a goodwill ambassador for the UN Refugee Agency in June 2018. And Emmy has represented UNHCR at high profile global events, including Youth Strategy 2030 launch at the UN General Assembly. She has also given powerhouse performances of her poetry on stages across the world, from Google Zeitgeist to the Seagate, a music festival in Hungary. I mean, the virtual stage is yours. In the middle of Aulad Rif, there was a bakery that brought fresh bread at dawn. Biscuits for the morning tea, the taste of thyme, sesame, and coriander, the smell of stew on the neighbor's stove, a month to prepare for a month of fasting and complaining and sharing and care that runs deeper than the lines that divide us. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر كتبه الله العظيم آه Thank you so, so much, Emmy. That is pure art. And we are so grateful to have heard those words that you have used to express how you feel. 